amended. Jeremy seconded. Second. Cool. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Awesome. Okay. Thank you, team. Uh, self education and learning round table of um, yeah, any updates? Um, I'll just say thank you, Michael. I finally picked it up. It's a lot heavier than I want, like for my bedtime reading that I was <laughs> hoping. But, yeah. Um, so I can say <clears throat> there's a huge thing about um, uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, I am part of um, other um, non-profit organizations and we are all working on that issue. Um, I think it's like part of our committee focus too. So I don't know what we can talk about it or what we can do. We are already doing, right? Um, but ours is like more social justice and economic justice. So I don't know. If if uh, we should talk about the EI more or can we do anything about it? Because there are lots of grants available for that issue too. So if we come up some kind of, I don't know, project or something. Yeah, that's all. For <laughs> like the implementation of the, after we come up with the equity plan, do you think there'll be more grant opportunities for doing that? Yeah, cool. yeah. I, Good, I'll, I'll just we'll alert that you later, that you know, like, grant, <laughs> up, grant opportunities are almost nil for us unless we, you know, we find places that will um, support um, government government agencies. I mean, this is what we've been running into as I've been doing the research, trying to get money to help us fulfill our obligation to create a discourse. So I think we should not count on grants um, unless uh, no, we. No, I mean, we, <clears throat> sorry, Michael. When I say well, there are lots of grants, we... uh, go ahead, Michael. <laughs> okay, and then we'll go back to Bellin. <laughs> okay, so should we? We should not count on grants um, unless we find a fiscal agent who is willing to be the the pass through for us. Um, uh, a, a nonprofit that would that would, would do that, and that might be the solution to a lot of problems. If we're if we're trying to you know run programs that are going to cost some cost some money, and you know there may be somebody out there who's interested in that. There may be some organizations interested in that. It's a neat idea. Yeah, so it's a good point. I agree with you. Uh, our job shouldn't be trying to find money. When I say there are grant opportun opportunities, I mean that if we advise something to do in our community, uh, that people or organization can find grants easily mm -hmm. because it's kind of, it's a hot topic right now. Jeremy? Yeah, I would, I would just um, add to that um i think it's well i think it's outside of my understanding of our work to be a fundraising body i think our our role seems to be more about um putting pressure on the city government to lean into social economic racial justice issues and also be a, a convener of folks in the community around these issues as they interface with city government. Um, so I think, I think I'm just agreeing with you all in that respect, like our, our leverage, our, our muscle is in that area. And I know we're doing some fundraising out of necessity for creative discourse. Um, but I, that, that feels like a larger discussion for us to have if we want to go even further down that route. So thanks. Um, just to bring us back of like, yeah, is, are there other things happening in your lives or in the state house or in the city just um, around social, economic, racial justice that anyone wants to share that we should know about? 
I can share that oh, yeah. there's okay. quite a there's quite a bit of um, work happening on on this at the the, Medi the UVM Medical Center that I've been participating in. Um, had a really great uh, first of three trainings last week um, that had a, a great turnout. I think nearly 150 employees came out for a, a pretty interactive session. Um, kind of on, on racial justice learning. Um, so I think th our organization is taking it very seriously. There's a lot of work to do, but it seems like a lot of people are really interested and hungry for that kind of work. So it, encouragingly, it, it's, I think it's serious and it's happening at the medical center. So. Yeah. Thanks. Lauren, did you sorry about Sorry about the piano in the background. It's great. Yeah. Nice. I was just going to share, um, I, I think I've shared before, like through my work, we're working with um, a group called the Center for Whole Communities and just get a stream of resources and I'm putting in the chat a little YouTube video. It's like 12 minutes long, but it's something like how to stop worrying, how I stopped worrying and started love talk, started to love talking about race. And it's just like the message is essentially, you know, for, for most things in life, if we make mistakes, we're like, oh, I'm only human, like, I'll learn from it, I'll go on. And like, if we're talking about, like, racial issues, and we screw up, it's like, somehow, like an implication of our entire, like, being, and we put too much pressure on it. And like, we need to, um, but he does it in a engaging and uh, I thought, uh, a, a good way of thinking about that. So I, I found it, if anyone's interested, I found it uh, helpful to watch. Could you send the link to that? Um, in an email? Yeah, I put it in the chat, but I, I'd be happy to email oh, it around oh, to okay. this group too. Cool. Thanks, Zoom. Kazoo tight, Cameron. Um, maybe, uh, yeah, move into report backs from other related city committees. Um, so Michael, we mind sharing uh, about what's going on with the police, what's, what's been happening with the police review committee? Um, well, Lo Lauren and I can, sh can share this, yeah. The, yeah, this part. Um, the, there have been a number of uh, conversations with uh, creative discourse. And I think um, the, the, f the first one, which will be, uh, well, um, I guess the one that they're, they're working on now with uh, the BIPOC population, um, uh, the police review committee was uh, asked to send in some names and suggestions. Um, so far as I know, the uh, uh, CD folks are planning to use some version of this, of some or all of the seven questions that we sent to them for interview. I haven't seen the final draft of what those questions will be, but they did agree to um, to to use the the recommendations for questions that we sent members of our committee sent that that committee sent. Um, what else? Um, it's, it looks like it's going to be a good a good cooperation between uh, C, uh, CD and both of our committees. Um, uh, that they're willing to they're willing to sort of give us a lot of information, and they'll devote about half of their meeting with the BIPOC population to issues about police, and half to some of the other issues that um, whatever it is that they've written up for for uh, this committee's concerns. Lauren, I'll you know if there's anything else you need to add to that, I think. I'm honestly encouraged that that's happening. I think that's such a big conversation in our community. Um, and I'm glad that, you know, some of this meeting that they're helping us with can be dedicated to that. Um, you know, we here at the city, we hear from the same few folks at the meetings and it'll just be nice to get some diversity in, in thought. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to learning from that. Uh, 
I will say one of the things that um, the, the police committee was discussing when we were having our own conversations about um, an advisory board and how do we get voices. Um, one of the things that Jack McCullough and I um, emphasize is that we know that when you when you start conversations like this, it's easy to get the complaints. It's more difficult to get people to come out to say what they think is going is going right or going well. Um, and um, and so we, we're trying to figure out a way to be sure that um, it just doesn't become a pile on um, that that we really get to hear uh, uh, voices across the spectrum uh, in the city because we know that there are people who are not unhappy with um, with the police and who are not unhappy with with some of the other institutions but um, i mean it'd be okay if it was a pylon like if it needs to be a pylon it needs to be a pylon like we don't know what we don't know i just i just want it to be said that you know no one is no one in our camp is a, is afraid of that or um if that's what it has to be and that's what it truly is well it, or, i mean i i i agree that it, we, it's important to get those voices out but I think that there's the danger of um, uh, of, of losing track of the, of the folks who are not unhappy. Um, and I think we have to be just careful to be sure that they they get it they, they get a voice as well. That's all. Jeremy, do you have something to say? Yeah, I'm curious, Michael and Lauren. Um, I know the the Montpelier Roxbury School Board had formed the, the commission to look into the SRO and they recently re released their recommendations and their report. Um, I only caught kind of peripherally what, what came out of that. Um, and I'm wondering if your police review committee is connected with that group and using their report as information because it sounds like a, a lot of good work was done on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can... Um... Yeah, so the way that that group is kind of rolling out the work is like we've identified a whole bunch of issues and are doing both like the outreach and research around what, um, you know, current practices are, what like some definition of best practices might be, where there's gaps, where there's concerns that are being raised by the community. And for SRO um, as a specific issue, the group has decided and, and Michael jump in, but, um, to basically take that report as the baseline and we'll look at it ourselves and you know get it into a, a format and you know make sure that it makes sense to us um, but use that as the baseline so the kind of format that we're using to pull together the report and recommendations that group has agreed to kind of provide the first draft of that so they're looking to be you know really take advantage of all the work that did go into that um, but then we'll you know, figure out how that fits into the, the broader recommendations of, of that group. Great, thanks for sharing. Any other questions or updates? Um, I can also just share that I met with Montpelier Live about doing the small business um, uh, contributions or to support the, um, the uh, you know, the, st the stipends for participants um, and essentially that they do not have a like line item for for that. And so they can do like they can ask, they're going to send out like specific requests to to local businesses, like to the co-op in particular. And they thought he thought would be, um, you know, a good a good place to, to you know, ask for for doing for doing this type of work. Um, but also shared that they had just hired kind of like, just like what you were saying, Pellin, everyone's kind of doing doing this work and they just hired Abundant Sun, which is a group that was, did not apply, you know, for the RFP with us, um, but they um, are consultant to do kind of a work plan for diversity, equity and inclusion, like developmental work and audit, um, specifically around, um, you know, Montpelier Alive's work. So Montpelier, like the, you know, kind of in the more commerce section around policies and procedures and community engagement and programs. So as part of their like 
RFP. I'm not sure if that's even what, a, what it is, but like their, their work plan, um, they're not going to be doing like focus groups. There's less overlap from the SRO work, um, but they are going to be doing like interviews, um, you know, or like leadership round tables for like Montpelier Life board and staff. So um, I don't think there's a huge amount of overlap. I shared the work plan with creative discourse and they're like, oh yeah, we know that. That sounds great. Um, but I am, and, and they're just also trying to be mindful of their time. So they asked for me to reach out to Abundant Sun and just to share more about the work that CJAC is doing, um, just to make sure that kind of we're all on the same page. And, you know, we have like a small population and kind of three very similar projects going. And so just wanting to make sure that we're not crossing wires. Because um, I just like didn't even know that it was happening until it's now already started. So, um, so any questions about that? Cool. All right. Now, of course, I've lost my agenda in all these emails. Come on. Because Lauren has forwarded it. Great. Cameron? Sorry, yeah. so, oh, sorry. I was just letting you know where you were at in your agenda. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, creative Discourse Work Plan Update. Um, so is essentially that they are, um, you know, starting moving with having the meeting. So I don't know, Cameron, I feel like you're, you've been point on all of them to date. So yes, if there's any, you know, any updates there. Um, or anything so we, that you want to share about organizing them. Yeah. Well, so my, the best laid plans of mice and men, right? I don't oh, no. figure out some stuff. Um, so update, I have scheduled all four meetings that they've asked us the city to do one with staff, one with police and fire staff, and then two individual meetings with our two staff that identify um, as uh, black um, so, um, I had told you I had going to, I was going to like randomly assign folks that didn't work. There was just not enough people available. Um, a lot of our folks are shift workers and it's just, while we we're paying overtime for this, it just wasn't feasible. So, um, with the police and fire, we are just doing a, um, buckshot approach where I invited every single one of them and I'm hoping that half of them show up. Right. So we'll see. Um, the staff one was easier because they uh, there's less shift work there. So that was as random as possible, cutting out leadership, but making sure there were folks who deal with financial decisions like the creative discourse asked. And then um, the individual meetings have just been set up with them as individuals. So um, all of those are happening soon. The first one is on the 22nd. And then one on the 8th of March, and then the final two are on the 10th of March. So we're moving through it. I'm very excited. Um, staff seems interested. I haven't had any pushback. Um, I didn't anticipate any, but you never know. Um, so people seem really interested ab about participating. So um, I have, I'm very glad that yeah. that was able to be scheduled. So Good to go. Go, Cameron, go. Yeah. Thanks, Cameron. <laughs> and then the other two meetings that, um, so they had kind of offered, just to review real quick, they, you know, offered, they wanted to do kind of the city staff, uh, community organization leaders, and BIPOC residents kind of as a first wave to then be like, okay, you know, once we have these focus groups, then we're going to do the survey, we're going to refine our questions, and like, make sure that the groups that we had planned for for the second round are still the right groups to have. You know, if they need to like combine them or, you know, I got an email today, someone being like, why are you doing a young people group and not an elderly Montpelier rights group? You know, like, but to like make sure that we're doing, we're having the right um, focus groups for that kind of second wave. Um, so for organizing the next two, so the times that we kind of thrown out there, um, we're for the community organization leaders, March 8th from 4.30 to 5.30. And then for BIPOC residents, Saturday, March 13th. And again, kind of as Michael was saying, that's one's gonna be the combination of the SRO one and the other one. So it's gonna be two hours. Um, and that'll be either like 10 to noon or noon to two, depending on work, when works better for folks. What's the so, date of that again? Yep, Saturday, what? March 13th. Okay, thank you. And so, um, they the the kind of pat, like we we just met on Monday and kind of made up the final plan for what this outreach is going to look like you know 
Um, but I'm sure you saw it. there's a Google form for folks to fill out where they're asking folks not just for their email and contact information to be able to get the um, you know the, the Zoom link to be able to participate, but just to get a little bit more like information about who these people like who who they are um, to make sure that they're like intersectional meetings even like within the BIPOC meeting or within the um, you know uh, the um, community uh, organization leaders meeting um, and things like that. And, and so again, they're like kind of working backwards from being like, okay, here's a time that we know works for like one or two people who are like leaders in these communities. And then like everyone else who can come is people who can come and we just have to like invite everyone. And then, um, but yeah, so similar to kind of what Cameron's saying, rather than like building the group of people and then saying, okay, like when works for you of being like, okay, we've got a couple of people now let's invite everyone and see um, see if we can um, get folks to show up. So um, both of these, we kind of have a due date of like a week before so that we can then like send out the Zoom link and like make sure people actually have it on their calendars um, bef you know, beforehand. And that's for two reasons. You know, one is to make sure that, um, you know, to, to like check in with those kind of like brokers or like liaisons to make sure there's not like, oh, if you invite this person, then these people aren't gonna speak. You know, if there's like some weird tensions that we would need to make sure that they know about, um, as well as just numbers. You know, if we have, you know, 50 people sign up, we might, we, like, do we want to have, we can't really have 50 people on a Zoom call and have it be a productive conversation. So I'm just wanting to keep the numbers manageable um, to, you know, probably like under 15 or so. Um, so kind of inviting a cross section of folks from there. Um, so I did have a question that yeah. I tend to ask them. Um, they're calling me to figure out how to get money, for, like the the yeah. stipend money from the city. So I do have a meeting with them later. And I wanted to ask, what happens if more than, y'all have enough money if your grants allow you to use this money for stipends for 100 people, if yeah. with your $50 stipend that you voted on last time? What happens if more people show up? Like the city doesn't have any money, what do we do, right? So I don't like deny people because that seems counterproductive, but that's my, that's my biggest question going into this is we've, we've offered this sort of stipend to participate. What happens if we can't produce that? Yeah, so let's um, maybe pause on the fundraising part of that, but more of just like the numbers cap it, right? Of like, right, so we've got these like, you know, five meetings where we're paying participants for participation, right? City staff, we're not. And want to kind of keep them capped at like a manageable number for Zoom. And so I, they like both me and creative discourse folks have been like very hesitant to be like, exactly what is that number? Because <laughs> like, well, we'll ask, you know, folks what they think too. But um, so if it's those five groups of like 20 people, then that is a hundred people. So I think five, yeah, five groups with 20 people each. So I'm not feeling super anxious about it, but let, let's let let's talk more about the funding too. Yeah. Pellin, what were you gonna say? Sorry to dive oh, in. I would say uh, if we have 100 people, we can tell uh, other people who uh, want to come. We hit the numbers from now on, it will be voluntary based. So maybe they wanna do it anyway, right? Without money. So maybe we can well, see that. And two, people can't just show up to the meetings too, right? So they have to like fill out the form and then they'll get sent the Zoom invitation link. Like if they're like invited to come to the meeting too. Yeah, so I'm hoping, like I don't, I'm hoping there won't be a huge extra number of people showing up. Although obviously that could always happen. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just talking a lot here again. Um. But yeah, so I just you know sent out that email with the um, with the link to our newsletter list. Um, I was thinking it would be great if we could maybe just spend a few like a you know five ten minutes right now, just forwarding this that email or you know drafting your own email and sending it out to community service organization leaders in um, in town who we want to make sure we can invite. Um, BIPOC residents, we want to invite, um, uh, you know, people, people in our, in our networks. 
Um, so does that make sense to do right now or, or do folks want to do that after the call? Michael, yeah. Um, I, now I'm getting confused about the process because yeah. I sent a whole list of names to, uh, to, this, to Keisha. Um, and I and I don't know what she's doing with that. So am I supposed to contact them, or has she already contacted them? Um, the list of names um, that are like like the leaders in the in these different right. communities. Commu yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. There, were, there were several. I mean, I used our 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 um, chart right. of, of, yeah. the, of the different groups, and I filled in names for each one of those, or as many as I could think of. And sent those. Well, first I sent them to Cameron. Then I sent yeah. it to Keisha because that's what we decided was good. So now you want yep. me to. So you want me to send it to them? I mean, who is who has done the contacting? And is it up to us so, to do it, or is, or is CD doing it? These are kind of the like the the like. What am I trying to like the cultural? These are like leaders in these different communities, right? And so the idea is to like make sure that this time works for them, and then to have them, um, you know, reach out to their communities as well, right? Because we, what what we're trying to avoid is we don't want to have a spreadsheet of like all of the BIPOC leaders in or, or BIPOC residents in Montpelier and their cell phone numbers and like all the other ways of how they identify and things like that, right? And so by doing this, you know, Google form to have people fill out. We don't, we're not holding that. That list is then going to um, a creative discourse. Um, but that um, we can still like do that, you know, individual recruitment. So not relying on these, on these partners. So I think it's both is what I'm trying to say. So I think Keisha reached out to, I think the, pe the people that she knew on this list, you know, to ask them to, you know, to participate in this. Um, but I think, you know, it's, we're we're in charge of the recruitment essentially i feel like i'm not answering your question michael you're looking very confused i am i'm like yes and yes both okay. <laughs> all right um as so just as a quick review for these two um meetings that we've got coming up so you know we've for community organization leaders we've got joan javier duval and sue minter but like also we definitely should be inviting like the montpelier um you know uh senior center and another way and you know like there's so many other you know organizations to um you know to invite there um I'll send it to the senior center's advisory board. I think that would be more appropriate than staff. Oh, great. Um, I can give a quick update. I have emails out to um, some of the contact folk leaders connected to youth organizations. Um, that was before I knew about this form, so they don't have a link to the form. Um, but if I don't, if I just sent these emails out a few days ago, so if I don't hear back from them, I can Love follow again. up and, and circle back with the form. Um, I contacted folks at Outright Vermont, um, the Teen Basement Center, um, a teacher at Montpelier High who works with the racial justice group there, um, and then our kind of youth leader at the Unitarian Church of Montpelier. So I, I think there's more folks to contact, um, but that was my first wave of like solid leads that I had. So um, it sounds great, like- Great list. Um, it sounds like that group is in the next wave. So right. what do you think the timeline would that be, April? Let me check the work plan real quick. I'm not remembering is what I'm. I think still like, yeah, later March. Okay. So yeah. Hopefully we can 
have that quick turnaround. Anyone else want to uh, share anyone else that they're going to be reaching out to you or I mean, recognizing that we are being recorded. So probably more of these like organizational leaders, you know, community liaison folks. Yeah. I had uh, reached out to a bunch of LGBTQ organizations and I just didn't know if that was still on the queue. Um, one of them had reached back out to me yesterday being like, where is this thing that you said? When's it happening? Yeah. yeah so um, that is still on the docket for the second round, right? Or no? Yes. Okay. Well, then I will patiently wait. Thank you. Okay. Okay. And then um, Cameron, I think I had on the calendar, yeah, of having you come on March 1st to the meeting with my next meeting with Creative Discourses, kind of after the first couple of rounds of ones, if you're meeting with them anyway, um, would you still want to, I was just going to invite you to come to the March 1st check-in as well as with anyone else who wants to come. Yeah, that would be great. Just forward it cool. to me. If I have um, nothing, if there's nothing scheduled, uh, I will be there. During that time, yeah. As many times as we need to, no worries. Um, except that it doesn't seem to be on my calendar, so I've got to figure that out. What happened there? Um, okay. And um, remaining groups and potential dates. And so, yeah, if while you're talking to these kind of leaders of folks, if you um, also just, uh, if there are like good potential dates that work for them, um, for Keisha and for Tabitha, they just wanted uh, that weekends and Mondays are usually better for them. Um, so when, you know, looking for, for dates or times, um, if they can be on weekends or Mondays, uh, just of, of, of defined potential times um, in those times. Cool. And then obviously, you know, some of these meetings are happening on other days, so things happen. Okay, anything else on like work plan, recruitment, meetings coming up? Um, fundraising, here we go, let's dive in. So I feel like I'm hearing, yeah, hearing this tension of, um, you know, we're not a fundraising group. Um, and so uh, like how, you know, how, how much should we be going after having fiscal sponsors and doing a lot more grant fundraising to be able to fully stipend or uh, fully pay for this work, um, you know, the full 57,000. And, you know, how much we really be focusing on, you know, the core of our work of the, you know, of, of, of doing this outreach and, 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 you know, prioritizing this. Just as a, you know, quick reminder, we've gotten two or three grants now, but we've got about $5,700 in the bank um, so that we, you know, uh, I think the, my original plan was of spending the $5,000 for um, creative discourses for paying for their time to be able to do this work. And that only from our individual fundraising of doing the outreach to, um, you know, to members of our community to be able to pay for this stipend. Um, so right now that's seven hundred dollars, you know, seven hundred and eighteen dollars, which would pay for, you know, basically one focus group of fourteen people. Um, and so we would either need to like really kick up our individual fundraising gear, or um, you know, circle back to those funders to make sure that we can spend those on the stipend. Um, and then, so just wanting to have that conversation, making sure the $50 sounds right, making sure we want to prioritize paying, you know, using this grant funding to pay for stipends rather than paying for the consultants. Um, and then, you know, if we want to do more fundraising from individuals or more fundraising from, from grants or, you know, just, yeah, wanting to open up that conversation. Yeah, Jeremy? Um, as far as creative discourses contract, are they, what are they, what work have they, are they, have we committed to paying them for and how long does that get us? Where does that take us? I believe that's just for this first 
phase, this first work plan, which is the outreach, the focus groups, and the survey, and the, I believe the summary and the presentation of the summary to CDAC and to city council. Um, and I believe that's 10,000, 12,000. I'm trying to point that number out of thin air. Can't remember. 10,000. 10,000. And so that's what we've got covered from the city council. When, I'm sorry if this is all available information in the work plan that I don't have in front of me, but, and then the next phase of work, when were they anticipating starting that if money was available? After this, that. <laughs> Okay, I guess. So I'm not sure <laughs> because like also so when we originally fall. done this, right? It was like everything's been shifted at least six months. Um, yeah. Yeah, Lauren. We'll we'll just so there's ten thousand for this fiscal year, and then if voters approve the budget on town meeting day, then ten thousand more is included in that budget. That would you know allow us to continue some scope, and it was you know there was like. A menu of options and we were doing some of the things at the budget point that we had so then there were other ways you could flesh it out um, further and do additional work i mean i'm almost thinking like to helen's point like this first phase where we're gonna you know hopefully be identifying some more kind of like the kind of work that we need to do as a community could be easier to fundraise around. Like right now we're trying to fundraise around like process, which is exciting to some of us and less so to some others. Um, so I, I think that, you know, and that might help also like identify that there might be an appropriate fiscal sponsor of like an organization that's kind of doing work like that, that we can do in partnership or something if it's something that the community's identified as a need. So I could almost see being able to, you know, get through this phase and and then work, you know, because of like identified community needs. Um, mm -hmm. and I mean, I don't know, it's one approach to think about. I, I like the sound of that, Lauren. Um, it's the kind of iterative approach based on where we are and the reality of the kind of financial situation. Um, not to like take on more work than we can handle, but once we have that assessment, as you say, then we can be really, you know, thoughtful in how we move certain things forward because we can handle them either ourselves as a committee or in partnership um, or go for the big fundraising that may be needed. So I, that sounds really like a, a great way to approach it to me. So what I'm hearing is for the $5,700 that we have in our bank account, use all use that for these for stipends with the understanding that we're gonna, um, once we have this equity uh, audit in place, then we'll be able to, it'll be easier to do fundraising overall. Am I capturing that right? I agree. That sounds I good also, to me. I also just wanna make sure that, um, oh, what was the point I was about to say? Shoot. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, <laughs> Pandemic rain. Yeah, it's bad, y'all. Um, that we're making sure, like, we're reaching out to those funders, make sure that's okay. I, yeah. It is. They're all like basically foundation checks here. Do what whatever, right? But just making sure that's okay. I'll send those emails when we wrap up this call. That'll be good. Cool, that was a way easier conversation than I was anticipating. <laughs> I mean, just circling back to you, Pellin, because I feel like um, you brought this up, you know, right at the top. Does that, uh, that all make sense to you or does that bring up any other questions? Um, cool, great, easy peasy. Um, okay, recruitment, I'm just, um, you know, this is something we're keeping like, well, let's not do recruitment yet because, you know, we're working on getting these focus groups and hopefully we can use this process to find really awesome people. And so just wanting to circle back on if there, who are those awesome people and to make those like, you know, concerted outreach to um, see if they want to join our team and this process. Uh, is there any age limit to be a member? Should we go like maybe reach out high school students 
you know, they are doing a lot of things um, like similar we do. Yeah. Um, I don't know what you think. Maybe younger people will be more interested being a part of <laughs> than the like people who work and having kids and lots of responsibilities. I don't know. Just want to check if there's any age limit to be a member. No. No. Okay. I I will cool. take my daughter. She is. Uh, she knows lots of. You know, she's in ninth grade and she does this thing. So maybe she can reach out uh, her friends, like older <laughs> than her, something like that. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't promise, but uh, I can try to find a couple people from there, right? And younger ideas will be maybe good for us too. <laughs> I think it's a great idea. Yeah, they're awesome. Yeah, Michael. Um, <clears throat> there's somebody at the high school, his name is Matt McLean, who I believe um, does a lot of work with community connections. <clears throat> and he might be a person that we could talk to to see if he can identify somebody, you know, some some high school students as well. Um, and I, I, don't, I, don't, I think it's okay to be exploring that uh, angle from, you know, different different ways, but I like the idea of bringing younger people into, into this, but uh, that's his job is to identify uh, students at the high school who are interested in doing work in the community, either kind of work study, get credit for it, or community participation. Do you know, have his email and stuff, Michael? Um, I've never heard of him. I didn't know I, this was a position. This is awesome. Yeah, I, I know him and I can contact him. <laughs> Um, Great. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, I think it's also just like a reminder for when we're when we're doing this outreach. If you're like, oh yeah, that person should be part of our focus groups, and we should pull into the committee. Cool. Um, <clears throat> and. Last thing here is just other business, mostly on the web page updates. I'll hand it over to Jeremy and pull that up. Thank you, Jeremy. Yay. Nope, and you're muted. Sorry. Classic. I will screen share um, the document in just a minute. Once I find it. So can I share something funny with you? I hope you find it funny. So uh, in one of my other uh, volunteer work, they said um, when they attend a meeting, um, there's a like coffee cup says you are on mute and people, <laughs> because everybody has this problem all the time. So whenever a person is mute, they just, you know, raise their <laughs> cup. <laughs> and people oh yeah let me do it <laughs> no i thought it's pretty funny it's on my now i want one so bad <laughs> um okay so we had an existing web page which basically listed the committee charge um as well as a call for applicants and um the current membership which was outdated so the changes that i'm that I made in proposing. Um, first is just a note about our scheduled meeting time with a link to the events calendar on the Montpelier website where you can see all the upcoming meetings of any um, uh, committee, et cetera. Um, another call out for folks to submit an application to join the committee. Um, and then Another call out to join the mailing list um, that Shana has been working hard on um, sending out updates. And that's still, they're joining through the, the act now form. So that's still right. I think so. And that's, something, yeah, we could do that via Google form or something like that too. But um, yeah. just knowing that we're not supposed to okay. do Google. Yeah. 
Um, and the then specific things that okay, we'd have okay. to just yeah. We're... Um, then there, I cobbled together some language from what I had, from I think something you had sent a while ago, Shana, which was just um, a quick overview of our work with Creative Discourse. So there's just a couple of paragraphs, uh, a link to them. If folks are interested in who they are. Um, uh, just a, a quick note about what the output of the work is in the short term. Um, and then it gets into what was already there, the committee charge. Um, and then, and with the current membership, I don't know how many, I, I just guessed, I think three, are there three vacant seats or is that not the right number? I don't know. Sorry, three is fine. Okay. Um, and then again, uh, another call for new members to submit an application. So not, not a whole lot of new stuff, um, but updated, so. Curious what everyone, how everyone's feeling about that. Michael. Um, I would just make one suggestion to, uh, in the first uh, part of the, the committee charge, the, um, the first paragraph down there, mm -hmm. um, um, you have the sentence, um, the, the city council has established. Uh, I think it's, this, it's the third line. I can't see it on the way where we are. Oh, come up a little bit more. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, there we are. Uh, okay. So the third line, the city council has established, I would recommend that we just put it in, in 2018, the, the city council established the, so that people get a, a sense of, you know, that this has been going for a while um, and it sort of pins a, a date in uh, its currency, just just to sort of, just get get that anchor of, of time. Got it, Got it. great. I will do that. Mm -hmm. Um, I, th I think it looks great. Thank you, Jeremy. Um, one thought would be like at the very top, like maybe like one sentence or some just brief because it just jumps right into the schedule without like I know mm -hmm. you can scroll down and find out like who we are, but something some like a brief summary of the charge and then have that full yeah. charge down. Um, just yeah. like a welcome could be. That's a great, could be good. great idea. Um, and then just in the list, I think, including whoever the city council rep is, which mm -hmm. um, might or might not be me in a couple of weeks, <laughs> so depending on how the election goes. So yeah, I had, a, I had a question about you being added to that list and also if Cameron should be added to that list as well. And I don't know what, how to designate either of you in doing that, so. Yeah, I mean, it, you could like leave it like uh, a city council liaison and like you could almost even leave it just like that or put um, a name depending on who it is. I mean, the nice thing about identifying Cameron is like she's a mm -hmm. great person to contact if people have questions or yeah, like um, a link to email would be awesome. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Could I do that for you, Cameron, and add just um, city staff liaison? Yeah, or... of course. Okay. Okay. All right. Those are great suggestions. Thank you. Well, yeah, that looks great. Thanks for all the work. Mm -hmm. further. If you send it to me when you're done with this, I can um, send it to uh, our assistant who helps with the website. Okay, thank you. Cool. Thanks, Mike, hear me? Mm -hmm. Sure, you're welcome. Thank you. And thanks team. Yeah, and any thank other you. other business? Like we have another hour long meeting. Boom, boom, boom. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Um, do we make a motion to close? Why can't I still not remember how to do yeah. this? You can no. just say without Thanks, further all. discussion. <laughs>
without further discussion. Um, see you all in a couple of weeks. And yeah, I'm gonna spend this time sending those emails to um, to funders and to potential participants. Cool. All right, Thanks next meeting will be March 3rd. Ooh. Thank you. And you're gonna send, Shana, you're gonna send the, the template uh, form letter to all of us by email, is that it? I think I sent it in the a newsletter and I think you were, I hope, I think you were on it. So oh. that's, I mean, it's not like a template, but it's just like, oh, okay. I think it has all of the required mm -hmm. information. Yeah, and I just so. saw that, that 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 just appeared in my mailbox. So I'll, I'll look at that. Okay, thank you. Perfect. Thank yeah, you. definitely make it your own and everything else. So cool. Thanks all. Okay. okay. Thanks. Bye. See everybody. you all. Thanks everyone. Bye. Take care. Have a good week.